welcome back to the channel or also hi if you're new here my name is emma you have clicked on my reading vlog for a farewell to arms by ernest hemingway this is for the game of tones book club that i host along with my best friend carolyn from carolyn mary reads so for this whole vlog i'm gonna be reading a farewell to arms uh this is my third hemingway book and basically the premise for this book club is that every couple of months we will have a live show discussing two books that are similar in some way shape or form and we'll be talking about both of them so for january and february we have a farewell to arms and february is um once there was a war by steinbeck i started a farewell to arms a few days ago it's the beginning of the new year it's the beginning of january and this is the first book that i started to read in the new year probably the first book that i'm going to finish and as of right now i'm 30 pages through very getting very into it but also really really taking my time i need to pick a bookmark because right now i just have my tabs i am annotating this i'm not really i haven't i haven't really formulated my annotating system yet for this i've just kind of been placing tabs um, some in the introduction where I was learning some things and then we have had some really beautiful quotes that I just wanted to have. So I don't know what A Farewell to Arms is about going into it other than I know that it's based on Hemingway's experience in World War One when he was an ambulance driver. Um, the book does open in Italy in World War One, and we follow Henry who is a soldier. He goes on leave all around Italy on vacation and when he comes back he kind of starts this relationship with this British nurse named named Mrs. Barkley, Miss Barkley. And that's that's all that's happened right now. That is it. Um, the two Hemingway books that I previously read are A Movable Feast and The Sun Also Rises, which was his first novel. A Movable Feast is more kind of like nonfiction diary entries about his time living in Paris when he was writing The Sun Also Rises, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what I'm getting into because I have the edition that has 47 alternate endings. Welcome to the vlog. This is hopefully going to take me all month to read because I really just want to savor it, get into it. Um, I know how this is going to end. I feel like I know how this is going to end. In the author's introduction, Hemingway is like, I believe, I believed that life was a tragedy and I knew it could have only one end. And then the quotes, the quotes that I've highlighted are just, I love, I really have grown to love I almost said, I almost said Dickens, Hemingway's writing style. Um, I never thought I would like Ernest Hemingway. I really didn't, but there's something addictive about it. I say this every time I read one of his books. There's something so addictive about the way that he writes, the, his short, crisp dialogue. It's just, it's so compelling in a weird way. I just love, love this one. Do you suppose it will always go on talking about the war? No. What's to stop it? It will crack somewhere. Or probably my favorite one so far, let's drop the war. It's very hard. There's no place to drop it. Let's drop it anyway. All right. I just really like it. So Miss Barkley, man, I don't know what's going on with her. She lost her boyfriend of like eight years in the Battle of the Somme. So she, I think she's kind of pretending that our main guy is her lost soldier kind of come back to her. I think that's kind of what she's imagining in her mind every time they get together um, when they're off duty. I feel like that's kind of what's going on in her mind right now. I think he's he's just kind of there. He's along for the ride. He's an American serving in the Italian army because he speaks Italian and he happened to be in Italy at the time. So that's kind of why he's there. Like I said, 30 pages through. This book is, I think, three. No, how long is this book? This book is almost 300 pages. I'm excited for this journey. Welcome to the Hemingway Diaries. If you are reading this book, I've seen so many of you guys pick it up with us. So please let me know. And I think right now I'm probably just going to sit down to read. Hi, checking in with an update on Dear Ernest Hemingway. I am 100 pages through, which is chapter 19. Um, there's a couple things I want to talk about. So let's talk about them. Number one. I am enjoying it. I always feel like I enjoy Ernest Hemingway so much. I think there's just a quality about his books that makes them something you really want to pick up and sit down with and read. I just find them so readable. Uh, I think I am learning with Hemingway though. I really like his dialogue, but in terms of his description of scenes and places and people, his very like blunt, kind of like bare bones, just gonna tell you how it is. Do you want to come up here? come up here and chat. I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of that because it does tend to sometimes get a little bit dry. I do appreciate the nature of his descriptions, the nature of his prose, um, and that he is just straight up telling you what he's seeing. There's no embellishment. It's just like, there's a house. It was red. Um, but I am, oh, okay. Kelsifer decided he's going to be a cameraman today. 
Um, I am a fan of those bit more lyrical and descriptive and beautiful <laughs> writing styles. So sometimes when it's just like a paragraph telling me about a building, it does, okay. It does get a little bit dry to get through. 100 pages in, what is happening? Uh, he gets injured very early on, Mr. Henry, who we're following. Um, so he does, before he gets under, he does, like I think I was saying, start a relationship with one of the nurses. She is English. Her name is Miss Barkley. Her name's actually Catherine. And they kind of start having a relationship that doesn't really mean too, too much because, like I said, she's kind of subbing him in for her prior love interest who died in the war already and he is just kind of, you know, he's just along for the ride, not really putting any attachment into it, just kind of for something to do. Um, but the relationship is slowly changing because he gets transferred to a hospital in Italy after um, he's injured in a battle and she also gets transferred to the hospital to work there and the relationship does start to have greater depth to it. I just don't love it, I don't really care about the relationship because it's just kind of like, mm, you know. Before he's injured, we have him and his other ambulance drivers. This whole vlog, by the way, will probably contain like very mild spoilers, but I'm not going to spoil like the ending or like any major plot points that happens. I mean, I think it says in the synopsis he gets injured, um, but he's talking with his other Italian ambulance drivers before the battle begins about war itself and like there's been a lot of conversations about World War One and just war in general and I, I think those are the moments where so far this book has really been shining for me um, but one of his friends says it could not be worse there is nothing worse than war and he says defeat is worse but then his friend replies what is defeat you go home someone else is like no they come after you they take your home i think you do not know anything about being conquered and so you think it is not bad there is nothing as bad as war when people realize how bad it is they cannot do anything to stop it because they go crazy there are some people who never realize there are people who are afraid of their officers it is with them the war is made i know it is bad but we must finish it it doesn't finish there is no finish to a war. War is not won by victory. And then the last thing, there is a class that controls a country that is stupid and does not realize anything and never can. That is why we have this war. Also, they make money out of it. I love, 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 love the discussion so far about war. This was published right before, this book was published on the day I think the day that the stock market crashed in 29 or the day before. In his introduction, Hemingway writes so much about this being like an anti-war book. He doesn't want there to be any more war, but of course, like he is kind of coming up to the cusp and the things preceding World War II already on the day that it was published. So yeah, it's just, it's so sad. The part so far, because you're only at the front for a very short amount of time before you're whisked away because he's gravely injured in his legs. I just think the parts that were there describing like what was happening to him, they were honestly so visceral and like just made me feel so much. I don't want it to end. Um, someone sent me a TikTok or a reel on Instagram a few days ago of someone, of Bradley Cooper. I don't know what movie it was. But it's a movie where Bradley Cooper is reading a book and then he throws it out of the window when he gets to the end of it and he's just like screaming profanities at the book and it turns out that the book is a farewell to arms. So that made me quite nervous to finish it. Um, and at the same time that I'm reading this, I am trying to watch like a lot of documentaries and like movies on World War One because for me, for me, World War One is the one that is the hardest to conceptualize like in terms of like actual battle that's happening like what are the actual like like what is happening like trench warfare to me is so difficult to wrap my mind around like just how it's actually fought um but yeah i'm trying to watch some documentaries and stuff because world war ii was taught a lot more to us in school than world war one although i do remember some things from world war one but world war ii is the one that was really spent the most time on um but yeah and i'm also i also started watching all quiet on the western front really great movie so far i'm about halfway through i need to finish it probably sometime this week the thing is that like all this is very affecting to me and it can really change obviously i mean obviously it's this huge traumatic event so it just does require like some um i think patience with myself at least when i'm consuming these topics um but this is it's just it is really great so i'm gonna finish probably a few more chapters of this today um, and we'll see how it goes. So that is my update on A Farewell to Arms. Okay, I was actually just filming an update for my 
reading vlog in general, like my weekly vlog. But something that I forgot I wanted to mention was that sometimes I actually find it quite difficult to like analyze and like inspect Hemingway in the way that I would other authors because I think as a lit student, like you're trained so much to like look for things that are really other things like do you know what i mean like things talking through other things in terms of symbolism uh foreshadowing all of that stuff but i think because hemingway is so good and especially because he presents the fact that he says he's so good at creating truth at creating a book that really resembles life it's really hard to look for those things to examine and analyze because everything just appears to be a representation of life and life doesn't really you know work like a book does you can't examine like oh she's wearing a green shirt that means you know that means x y and z um so yeah it's actually a bit of a challenge for me i think to dig deep into hemingway's novels which is cool but it is hard for me to talk deeply about like okay this is what he's doing with these ideas um and i think a lot of it does come in the form of that dialogue lets life speak for itself which doesn't really need any examination if you present i think the bare bone truth of it what people say to each other how people act um which is refreshing in a way but it also i think not that it takes the work away from me but it just makes it a different kind of work and it's something that i find is a little bit of a challenge which is cool so anyway that's all i wanted to say i'm gonna go back to filming my weekly vlog now Chapter 41. Oh, I didn't tell you this. Really quick, mm. I'm going to interrupt you. Um, I have this old edition. Oh. It's from the 30s of the book. And this is the only copy that I thought I had of it. But I already ordered this copy. And then I forgot I also had this copy. <laughs> mess? What the hell? That one's so beautiful. This one? Yeah. I know, it's from the Hemingway Library from mm -hmm. Scribner's. Oh, but idiot me, freaking has four copies now. I'm like, meanwhile, I thought I had one. just finished the book do you feel like it's a it's the right ending i'd be interested in how you felt after reading the alternative endings i think it's a good ending <laughs> yeah 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 just like i didn't have never felt a stronger like the end right oh. like it's just like kind of like a punch in the face yep i just want to throw up <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what a vomit. Where am I supposed to put that? It. What am I supposed to do with that? Well, <laughs> well, another Hemingway done and dusted. So I will never be the same again. I will never be recovered. I don't know what to say to you. I finished A Farewell to Arms. I would like to say a farewell 
to my arms because I wish I had never even picked up this book because um, now I'm just a mess. I haven't recovered. Every time I think about the ending of the book, I just want to cry or I try not to burst into tears and things aren't going well, okay? Things aren't going well. So um, yeah, you saw that I finished this. I finished this on FaceTime with Carolyn because like I just, I felt like I just needed somebody to be there. And she was there for me because this is a reread for her, so she kind of knew what was coming. I knew what was coming because I could see it, I could see it a mile away, but it still really affected me. Really, really affected me. I didn't think I was really that into their writing, his writing, and it's not that I got overly attached to their relationship in this book because it is a love story, like we've been saying. I think just I'm so appreciative in a very hurt way of the way that Hemingway writes and delivers life and the truth of life to his readers. I think that's what got me. It just hurt me like nothing else. And yeah, I've just been not okay. So overall rating, I think I'm gonna have to give it four and a half stars. Um, I'm kind of not surprised to see that a lot, a lot of you guys are not enjoying this. I honestly completely 100% understand. I can see all of your points so clearly um but for some reason i just really enjoyed myself i had a really great time and i'm really happy that that is the case um i think there's so much to discuss and like i was talking about a few clips back it really i think to the end for me does resist um what's the word i'm looking for interpretation i find hemingway his books they really resist my attempts at interpretation and looking for meaning especially the ending of this book um, and that's hard. I think that's really hard to take, especially as a lit student, because that's what you're trained to look for. And like, I just, I'm really appreciative of his, his style, his, um, philosophy, I think, of just telling the truth, telling it straight, because that's what we got. And the way that this book ends, that is life. So raw, just a raw slice of baloney. If people bring so much courage to this world, the world has to kill them to break them. So of course it kills them. The world breaks everyone, and afterward many are strong at the broken places, but those that will not break, it kills. It kills the very good and the very gentle and the very brave impartially. If you are none of these, you can be sure it will kill you too, but there will be no special hurry. Stop. Okay, so he eventually, um, he eventually decides to say a farewell to arms uh, to the war in more ways than one. I'm not going to go too much into that because that does delve into some spoiler territory, but lots of things start happening and it really examines like him waking up to the real horrors of the war, especially when countries start turning in on themselves, turning in on their own people. Of course, he's in a, a somewhat special position, a unique position as well, because he is an American in Italy. And then the last thing was that I read all of the alternative endings, all 47 alternative endings. They're all very short. They're just like, some of them are a few paragraphs. Some of them are just one sentence to uh, end off the book in ways that Hemingway was, you know, brainstorming how he wanted to end A Farewell to Arms. My favorite ending, um, my favorite ending is, is the ending, is the one that he picked. I think that one was the best one, although I did highlight at least five other alternative endings that I really loved, but man, wow. Really good. Really good. I just, yeah, I, I perfect ending in my opinion, just absolutely perfect, masterful, um, and I have so much to think about now. I'm actually gonna be looking up a few critical essays and, and other work that's been done on Farewell to Arms. It is done, so I'm actually gonna be combining, I think, this vlog maybe with John Steinbeck once there was a war, um, depending on how much footage I have right now, so I think I'll probably combine it with once there was a war so we can fit two, two books in, it just makes more sense for a game of tomes, so um, thank you so much for coming along with me on the Hemingway journey. I guess I'm gonna go try to recover and hand it over to Steinbeck and future Emma reading Steinbeck and hopefully it treats me a little better and doesn't break my heart, so yes, four and a half stars. Okay, welcome to like a month later. How are you doing? Um, if you hear the coffee pot brewing away, it's because I definitely need another cup of coffee to try and finish this book. I have not recorded one single clip about Steinbeck's Once There Was a War simply because I like, 
have hardly anything to say. I'm liking this so much less than Hemingway. Hemingway has already won this round for me, but yeah, Once There Was a War is our second book. And this one is actually nonfiction, but it's so interesting to compare to Hemingway, even more so than I thought going into it, because Steinbeck um, was a journalist, or correspondent, I should say. And he wrote a whole bunch of dispatches during the Second World War. So we already have World War I with Hemingway and World War II with Steinbeck. But these are really interesting because, of course, they are being written for a purpose. They are contributing to the war effort. They are being sent back to the people back home so that they can get a glimpse of what is going on. And because of this, they are so altered, so changed. You can kind of tell that maybe he's stretching some things, maybe some of it. Some of it just has a very propaganda-y flavor at times, and he himself admits this in the, in the introduction. They are period pieces. The attitudes archaic, the impulses romantic, and in the light of everything that has happened since, perhaps the whole body of work untrue and warped and one-sided, which is really interesting to compare to Hemingway because Hemingway's fiction work rings so much more true than Steinbeck's non-fiction work. Very cool. So I'm really glad we picked these two. But yeah, so he just goes around and writes really, really short pieces, which is why it's very hard to get into because um, I'm already not a fan of short stories and these are like maybe three to four pages each of different things that are happening in the war. We have sections about um, people traveling, soldiers coming to North Africa, for example. Um, we have people working in Italy. It's just a whole bunch of different snapshots of the war in different countries as well, which is nice. But they are fairy tales, half meaningless memories of a time and of attitudes which have gone forever from the world. A sad and jocular recording of a little part of a war I saw and do not believe. Unreal with trumped up pageantry so, it, so that it stands in the mind like the battle pictures of Gettysburg, etc. And I've barely, I've barely tabbed anything, as you can see. Just overall, I'm not a fan. I find it very hard to get into them, to engage with them in a way, because a lot of it I can just tell that it's so fluffed up and the way that these little snapshots are being taken through Steinbeck's pen. They are to serve a purpose. They are to engage with the war effort. And like, yes, he does want to obviously report and be a journalist and engage with what is happening and present it, as truthful he can a picture of what is going on in the war so that people back home who are fighting the war at home can see but of course like so much of it is censored it goes through the censors there's parts that are redacted you can't say too much you can't say anything negative um, and as you can see I loved the introduction his introduction that he's writing years later when he's releasing these dispatches, I guess, to the public, but that was my favorite part, was his introduction because it just opens so brutally and like you can tell his writing has improved so much even in the, in the introduction. So he says, perhaps it is right or even necessary to forget accidents and wars are surely accidents to which our species seems prone. If we could learn from our accidents, it might be well to keep the memories alive but we do not learn. In ancient Greece, it was said that there had to be a war at least every 20 years because every generation of men had to know what it was like. With us, we must forget, or we can never indulge in the murderous nonsense again. The next war, if we are so stupid as to let it happen, will be the last of any kind. There will be no one left to remember anything. And if that is how stupid we are, we do not, in a biologic sense, deserve survival. So like the introduction, <laughs> honestly, the introduction is so much better than everything that follows, but I'm on page 206 right now. I only have like 25 pages left, but I'm really struggling to find the motivation to sit down and just finish it. So I just made another cup of coffee. I thought I would sit down, film this clip. There's a very big helicopter um, and finish it together, like just get it done because the live show is this weekend. So I really desperately need to finish this, but yeah, it's been a little bit of a disappointment. I'm not gonna lie.
Okay, so I just finished Once There Was A War. I have nothing new to say about it. Um, I did end up giving it three stars. Yeah, I'm like glad I read it. The only other Steinbeck I've read is The Pearl, but obviously I want to read like Of Mice and Men and East of Eden and everything else. So this one was just kind of an interesting work to read from Steinbeck because it's very unlike everything else and especially like seeing him writing so young. I don't remember how old he was when he was a correspondent, but yeah. So that is that. Of course, Hemingway won this round for me. Let me know if you read both of them, which one you preferred. And I will talk to you in a very chill, relaxed live show on Sunday. If you guys are still watching, comment a little, just you comment. I don't know, comment, oh, rain. Give me a little rain teardrop because of the rain in a farewell to arms. But yeah, that will be on Sunday, 12 p.m. EST on my channel. So I will catch you tomorrow, I guess, if you want to come hang out with Carolyn and I. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for reading with us. Thank you for joining us for Game of Tones. And until the next one, ciao.